And now, a program segment from the NPT production of Memories of Nashville. Now back then, downtown, much as it is today, was the center of business. It was also a prosperous time for shopping, retailers, restaurants, <laughs> and the place for entertainment. When you went downtown, much like when you flew on an airplane, you dressed up. You did not go in your jeans. Well, I don't think people had jeans back then, but you, you put on your gloves and your little hats, if you had them, the, the nice Sunday clothes, your heels and your hose if you were old enough, or your little socks and your velvet shoes if you weren't, and you went downtown, and you, you looked nice. And, and, it, and the men looked nice. Everybody downtown looked nice. You dressed up, it was an event, because if you were coming from the neighborhoods, I mean, it was a bit of a drive. So, and you would spend the whole day shopping till you dropped. If you were going to shop, you went to downtown. The department stores down there were Harvey's and uh, uh, Kane Sloan, Castanot were the three large ones. We'd ride the bus downtown, and, and we'd get off and we'd walk down to, depending on what we were gonna buy, it was just where you went to, to get clothes. There were restaurants downtown and, and there were movies downtown. It was the center of commerce. Uh, it was the center of government as it is now. People loved to go downtown. Downtown was sort of the center of, of commercial life. So that my father's restaurant was downtown. So on Saturday, even young girls would put on their dresses and their gloves and go downtown and have lunch, go to the movies. Travel in Nashville, I'd say for most African Americans, into downtown Nashville was again a time when you put your best foot forward. So you would dress to go downtown and shop. You would see very well-dressed people. We lived in the Hermitage Hotel uh, because the restaurant was on 6th Avenue uh, right down the street, and it was great fun. We would, my brother and I would run across the street and play in the park, and run around the streets, go to the movies. Have a good time. Well, the restaurant was called Cross Keys. When I was a child, I would catch the city bus after school frequently and go downtown to see my father and to go to the movies and go to see the merry-go-round at Harvey's and to, to mess around. And that was all a part of the, your playground, so to speak. My mother would take me downtown and we'd go shopping. I'd want to go to Candyland. That was where all the kids wanted to go because you walked in to the front door and you went past all this wonderful hand-dipped chocolate that they would serve and that chocolate smell would hit you the minute you walked in the door. You'd go back and sit in these wonderful little like teak wood, dark wood uh, uh, booths and you could order a you know, chocolate milkshake or get you a nice uh, uh, grilled cheese sandwich or whatever kind of sandwich you might want to have, potato chips or whatever it was. I mean, it was more something that a kid would want to do. You went downtown though, uh, in time for Easter and Christmas and back to school shopping. Uh, shopping for clothes has never necessarily been one of my more fun things to do, but if you could get the other things going like the, the trip to Candyland, it was, it was worth doing. So we would, uh, we'd always look forward to the chance to go down and do that. And, and see the other things. And downtown was always a, a bustling place. It was always, particularly at Christmas time, it would always be crowded to, with people because it was one of the main shopping places. It was a tradition to shop at Kane's Loan. I mean, they were old Nashville. Their, their store was attractive and uh, the owners were the floor walkers. So it, it, uh, it, it gave you sort of a warm and fuzzy feeling, but nothing like a visit to Harvey's. I mean, you walked into Harvey's, I mean, you, you, were in for a, you were in for a happening. Harvey's was definitely a happening. It was not only a department store, it was a place where anything could happen. With its signature carousel horses and real monkeys at the monkey bar, or at times, even an entire circus marching through the store. <laughs> you never knew what to expect at Harvey's was the first place in town to have escalators and of course you know when you were a kid you just thought that was neat to be able to ride up and down you you'd want to go shopping just to ride up and down the escalators Fred Harvey was uh, an entrepreneur innovator and he came to Nashville with the idea of <clears throat> creating a store that would be different to ride the escalators and to see the uh, figures from the carousels and to see a clown sort of strutting around um, and to see Fred Harvey himself sort of shuffling in his 
bedroom slippers from floor to floor was terrific. My great aunt and my grandmother, who were sisters, both were buyers for Harvey's department store downtown. I spent numerous hours playing at Harvey's. I remember the carousel horses. Uh, there was a lot to do if you were spending the day there just for fun. You could go ride the carousel and you could go to the monkey bar and you could look at all the different things in the toy department. So there was a lot to hold your interest as a child. It seemed more fun than Toys R Us probably is now because it was more magical. The, the dolls and the, the doll boxes piled high and the little trains and the, and the displays and of course everything that was advertised on TV, he had. It was there. Harvey's would have it because Harvey's had it. But I remember the toy department being, as a child, you know, taller than tall and bigger than big and, and Barbies and everything a little girl or a little boy could ever really want. Harvey's always had that cachet about it. You always knew that Harvey's has it and you always knew that Harvey's was a store that never knew completion. Fred Harvey had the carousel, which was wonderful, and was run by Max, who had been a prisoner, a prisoner of war in, in a concentration camp in Germany. And he had a tattoo. He had really survived quite a bit, and he was the sweetest person. And the monkey bar, of course, was just something no one today can believe. I'm sure the health department would just have a stroke. But there were monkeys in a cage and where you ate. And the monkeys jumped around and looked at the funny people, I guess. Well, Harvey's had a wonderful bakery, and they were famous for their apple pie. I remember Fred Harvey uh, specifically taking me around and letting me sort of pick out what I wanted to eat from the, the pastry department. And uh, he, he was just a sweet person. I, I really, of course, I was a little girl, you know, he liked to, you know, walk around with me and, and look at different things. Mr. Harvey Sr., as he was referred to, was, was very nice. My grandfather, for many years, was head of the rug department at Casmus, so I had ambivalent feelings about uh, buying anything from Fred Harvey, but I, but I did. And I bought a lot of apple pie from Fred, Fred Harvey. Mr. Harvey, he had uh, trained at Marshall Fields and, uh, and was an aggressive, good retailer and uh, uh, did things like putting the, the, uh, the merry-go-round horses in as decorations inside the store and he opened up a monkey bar where you had live monkeys in a, in a cage. I don't think it lasted very long, but it was there, and I think the problem was that monkeys are filthy. And it didn't sort of work, you know, it really didn't work. I can't remember how long it was there, but I remember everybody wanted to go in and see it. And it was novel, different, and Fred was novel and different. He was a real entrepreneur.